Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to my channel where we talk about motherhood, wellness, and spirituality. And today I wanted to talk to especially the mothers today about essentials for your apothecary medicine cabinet, um, basically herbs for your stash at home. Now, giving birth, I believe it's an initiation on its own. And if you have just found out that you're pregnant, you are currently pregnant, or if you know of someone, congratulations, because this journey is just going to continue to unravel. And it's really interesting because, and I say initiation quite seriously, if you're familiar with, you know, the cultural uh, rites and rituals that go on with initiation. Um, and I say that very seriously because, you know, as women, we have, I think it's really encoded within us to go through these phases of initiation in our life regardless of whether or not you have a child, but especially if you do conceive, um, just because you go through so much. Um, whereas for men, they have to uh, bring on the experiences that we go through naturally, such as, you know, if men were to go through an initiation, they have to go through physical pain, um, through a various series of different things, fasting and many, many other occurrences. As I mentioned, this journey continues and it just continues, honestly, I believe until we die and transition into another life or whatever it is that you think happens after death. As you unravel uh, and get to know yourself through these different initiations, it's really important to get to know yourself. And I, cause I really do believe that once we do this inner work, this expands to our friends, our family, people within the community, and it's like a ripple effect into the world. So that means this work is really pivotal. And it's important that you do it from a sane state of mind because, you know, if you have gone through birth, you know, um, or if you're preparing, you know of the toil that it takes on the body. And if, you know, just on a hormonal standpoint, there's a lot that goes on. So factoring in, of course, your state of being, how you're eating, um, your lifestyle habits, all factors into your state of mind. I explained why postpartum nourishment is so crucial in another video. So if you want to check that out, I'll link that below. So as I mentioned today in this video, we're going to go over five herbs that you should have in your stash as a mother. All right, so the first herb is chamomile. Now, chamomile, I'm sure if you think of it, you may just have a wave of relaxation come over you, which is true about chamomile. And that relaxation aspect of it really just embodies the energetics of the plant as a whole. So it releases not only the emotional state of the body, but the physical, especially relating to the digestive tract, which is really crucial postpartum um, as your guts have been discombobulated within the series of almost a year. And so, and then after giving birth, of course, it's just getting back to shifting down and up where it needs to be. And so chamomile is just really nice um, to help. This beautiful flower is also wonderful for your little one. So especially once they start getting their little teethies, you can either infuse it into a tea at, by itself, just in water, or make a shelf stable uh, glycerite, or at least semi shelf, sta shelf stable uh, glycerite that you can keep on hand just to rub on your little one's gums whenever they're experiencing discomfort. The second herb that we're going to talk about is cardamom, the cousin to ginger. It's in that zinger. It's a long, it's a long word. Hold on, zinger base. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Latin names are hard for me. However, um, you get what I'm saying. It's in the ginger family. Um, however, it has similar attributes to ginger. It's just more calming, especially if you get the green um, cardamom. There's the green and the black. Now, if you come from the Eastern side of the world, Indian, African, Asian, the spice is used readily culinary wise. Um, and if you've experienced it, it's very, um, it's, it's warming. Um, it's energetics, which is nice, especially for the gastrointestinal tract again. Um, so if there's any, you know, digestional discomfort, cardamom assists with that. And of course, later on, once your little one is introduced to foods and spices, it's a wonderful, wonderful spice to introduce, um, not only for their, you know, digestional health, but also for their immune health as well. Other ways you can use it. I meant to grab my ginger, my gummy drops. I make like a... It's like a, I guess, I wouldn't say cough drop. It's more a soft, um, but you can make homemade cough drops 
um, and infuse that in there uh, during the seasonal time. You know, when people tend to get sick, um, incorporate other immune boosting herbs into that as well. And you can also use it in a mouthwash um, if you make that at home. Uh, these things, I'll link it below if you need recipes. I have herbal guides that you can sift through um, to get these recipes. But a homemade herbal wash, which it surprisingly stays a really long time, um, you have to add a good amount of salt for that to happen. However, I'll say it lasts about six months. And so cardamom, it's naturally a breath freshener. It's also an aphrodisiac. So of course, once you start feeling like you want to get intimate with your partner postpartum, cardamom assists with that as it helps with blood flow and nourishing and facilitating blood flow to the genitalia. The third herb is mimosa, which is actually going to start blooming, I would say about April around here. It's now considered an invasive species just because of how fast it's spreading in America. But mimosa originates in Asia and it is readily used in traditional Chinese medicine, actually. Um, both the flower and the bark, um, they both have their own constituents within them. Um, however, for mothers, I would more so, I would suggest flowers um, for your use. Of course, you can use bark. However, flowers are more gentle um, and the other reason being why flowers is such, offer such wonderful support postpartum is because it has that mood support uh, for yourself. It's also known as the happiness bark, rightfully so, because it really just nurtures to the spirit and really rejuvenates the spirit, which is really easy, you know, I wouldn't say it's really easy, but because, <sighs> because women, you know, being pregnant, you're a walking portal. You're a walking portal. You are holding this spirit. And this is not, I'm not saying this jokingly because um, in various tribal communities, they use pregnant women to, I guess as a prophecy to foresee things and to communicate with those spirits because they're holding, you know, babies represent this uh, in between, between our world and other worlds. So we're literally walking portals. <laughs> um, so with that being said, it's really important to really nourish your spirit and protect it um, because you don't want to be pulled down one way or the other. Um, you really want to be grounded and centered here. So mimosa definitely assists with that um, rejuvenation of the spirit. Fourthly, now before I go on to this herb, um, share this video uh, or save it for later and share it with someone that you may think will benefit from all the information relayed in this video. Now nettles, nettles has a very soft spot in my heart. Um, it's a very powerful nu and uh, nutritional plant. Now stinging nettles, when you touch it, hence its name, it's stinging to the touch, but it really soothes the soul. It's packed with vitamins and minerals such as vitamin K, A, all your B, well, I wouldn't say all, but the majority of your B vitamins uh, minerals such as calcium, iron, your magnesium, uh, which 40% of Americans are deficient. Why? <laughs> Why? When we have all these wild greens, including nettles, um, especially if you're up north, they tend to run wild up there. But um, yeah, magnesium, um, manganese, and many, many other uh, nutrients in the plant. It is a powerhouse, quite literally. And a group of researchers actually conducted a study in the Food Science Nutrition Journal in 2017, I believe. I'll link it below uh, so that way you can look at the research. And the protein. So they did an analytical comparison between nettle leaf, wheat, and barley just to see how they pair up and match with one another. Came to find out that nettles has three times as more protein as wheat and barley, three. And then nine times more minerals. What? I will say this now. I'll say within the next probably a couple of years. I, I, hmm, I haven't been to like a health food store in a while. It's probably already there. But nettle powder is probably going to be amongst the flowers in your grocery store watch it's gonna happen um just because it's so it's easy to grow first of all so there isn't an agricultural uh hamper there um it's really easy to cultivate it's easy to process um and it's a nutritional plant powerhouse nettle leaf i actually have it here in my kombucha with yarrow <laughs> this is so good but um 
yeah so nettle leaf is really really nice and just because the minerals itself um like i mentioned 40 percent of americans are deficient in magnesium which magnesium is responsible for so many hundreds and hundreds of metabolic pathways within the body so imagine if you're deficient those hundreds of pathways your body cannot do properly just because you're lacking so there's so much that goes on but once you fill your body with these nutrients you can function so much better. And I'm very passionate about this because I personally have experienced postpartum depression with our firstborn because of that nutritional deficiency. It wasn't hormonal. It was just, I needed some, <laughs> I needed some nutrients. So um, I really emphasize that point just because, um, yeah, it's really important for your body and for you to thrive. And then lastly is blue vervain. Blue vervain. I'm so excited to grow this plant this year. Um, I haven't experienced or been around the plant essence while it's alive anyway. While it's dried, I definitely have in a bath because when I ingest the tea the next day, my breasts are literal coconuts and it's really hard to breastfeed. <laughs> so, however, but if you are struggling to breastfeed, uh, blue vervain is really, really nice. It's a natural galactagogue. Um, just really helps to stimulate the milk duds within the breast. And it's also, if you are a typical type A mother, blue vervain will chill you out. Chill you out. You can take a bath in it. You can sip on it. Um, I will caution, if you do sip on it, it is very bitter, which is really nice, of course, for the gut. The gut loves bitters. However, if you're not too fond, make a really small potent shot of the tea so that way you don't have to suffer <laughs> with your teacup with the bitter blue vervain. All right guys that concludes all the five herbs that you should have in your cabinet for your apothecary if you are a mother. Uh, be sure to share this video. Let me know in the comments if you are already utilizing these herbs and plants and how you are using them in the comments. I'd love to chat with you and if you need further guidance as to what to incorporate into your life uh, please send me a message. I am taking on clients for herbal consultations and I am more than happy to assist you. And with that being said, I will catch you guys in the next video and I'm gonna, I'm about to sip on this. Bye for now.